the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, one God and man. Happy Feast of the Pentecost. If um, resurrection is the Feast of Feasts, um, I hope there is a category for this feast, maybe if we can call it the second Feast of Feasts, because without the Holy Spirit, the church cannot exist. And this is one of the main points, I hope, with the grace of God, it will be um, communicated today. Without the gift, the fire of the Holy Spirit, we cannot exist as a church. Whether local church, regional church, or church in the world, there is no church without the Holy Spirit. We can have buildings, we can have gatherings of people, but the true change and the true um, transformation and the true growth happens because of the Holy Spirit and with the power of the Holy Spirit. Any change in your life, whether personally or on a church level, cannot happen without the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is this fire in your heart, is this gift that you have received in your baptism, but it must be fired up with your longing, with your prayers, with the fear of God that you want to have in your life, with your full desire, with your full strength. This gift of God, the fire of the Holy Spirit, will set you free, will set you on this mission to be the light of the world, to be truly a child of God. The Holy Spirit will help you understand the Word of God. The Holy Spirit will give you vision for your life. The Holy Spirit will inspire you to view your life in a different lens, to receive it from God and to live it for God. We can spend days and days talking about the Holy Spirit. And believe me, yes, we can see it. To most of us, it's an abstract concept. But to those of us who have experienced it, literally, we can tell you it does exist. You, you can even touch it. You can even see it. You can even feel the heat and the warmth of the Holy Spirit when you receive it and when you look for it, and it is there. In the readings this morning, lots of readings, and I wish I would have the time to cover all the readings, but I hope I can maybe cover two or three points. One point is what we learned from St. Paul's epistle this morning is that the Holy Spirit is the driving force behind your faith in God. As in this verse said, no one can say that Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit if you're struggling in your faith, if you're struggling to relate to the church, relate to God, which is, in this time and age, became a hard concept, and all the forces around us tell us there is no God, or there are other gods and other higher powers that you can believe in, you, you, and you can choose your God. Exactly as in, this, uh, as in the times of the first church. We forget that the first church has faced the same challenges and even more challenges than what we have now. 
Back then, there was paganism. There was the Roman Empire. And if you don't believe in their God, you will be killed. Now, we can believe in many gods and there is no harm or no threat to our life. So back then, they really had many, many challenges. Moral challenges, cultural challenges, you name it. Don't ever think that the first church or even in um, our time back in Egypt, I'm talking to you guys, the young ones here, that we had it easy. No, there was never an easy time to believe in God. But no one can say that the Lord, that Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. You can ask for the Holy Spirit to believe. You can ask for the Holy Spirit to answer your questions. You can invite the Holy Spirit into your mind to speak reason into your mind, to open up the Word of God for you. Many times the Bible can become like a, like a rock you can't even carry, you can't even open. But when you ask for the Holy Spirit to open up the Word of God f for you, to give you light, to give you vision, to help you see, to help you connect, to help you understand, believe me, you will receive. We wouldn't have been here without the Holy Spirit. You wouldn't have heard us talking about God without the Holy Spirit. So it is true but it is left for you to ask for it and to experience it. So number one, you can't believe without the Holy Spirit. Personally, we can teach you what is our faith, but you cannot really receive it and own it and make it your faith without the Holy Spirit. When you seek it personally in your prayers, in your life. Number two, the Holy Spirit is one. And, but there are many, many gifts. The Holy Spirit is one, but gives different people different gifts. And we need that. We need to be different. Sometimes our human tendency to feel comfort is that I wish that everybody's like me, right? <laughs> it is our human tendency. I just, everybody would think like me, would be like me, would look like me, would eat like me, and would just, will have no problems. But the Holy Spirit does not want that. In verse 4 here, there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. The, there are diversities of activities, but it is the same God who works all in all. And I, I, I just want to spend some time here. Because in our human zeal, we want to belong. So we... We like to be in groups. We like to belong to certain people, certain churches, certain priests, certain bishops. But the message this morning is that it is the Holy Spirit that unites everyone. Yes, we are different. Churches are different. Priests are different. Servants are different. Deacons are different. You are different. And we need that. And the only unifying agent is the Holy Spirit who works all in all. We need our differences. 
and the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. So yes, although we like everybody to be like us, but we don't need that. What we need is differences. What we need is our different talents, our different visions. Not to make, it, to make us apart, but to unite us into one spirit. One is given a word of wisdom to another a word of knowledge through the same spirit. Another faith by the same spirit to another gifts of healing by the same Spirit. And as you know, the popular image of, and we have it here in this icon, the disciples along with St. Mary and the other people gathering in the upper room and different tongues of fire dwells upon them, each one according to their gifts. And then on the, on the, on the day of Pentecost, we heard the disciples spoke in different language, addressing the different needs of the different people gathered in that place at that time. So the message is the Holy Spirit wants us to be relevant, wants us to be different, and wants to use our different talents to speak, to relate, to different people. Not everybody gets inspired when they sing Coptic hymns. Not everybody is inspired when they sing spiritual songs. Not everyone likes tazbaha. Not everyone likes to hear a certain priest. It is okay. Because whatever God uses for your salvation is what is important for you. Do not compare. Do not compare churches. Do not compare servants. Each one is given a spirit according to their own gifts, to their own talents, and God is using that. It is one spirit. The only need that we have is that no one can say Jesus is Lord without the Holy Spirit. This is the one thing that we need, is to all believe in God because of the work of the Holy Spirit. The last point I want to mention, and it's a very known um, verse from the book of Acts chapter 2, and I um, reflected on it many times, but it is really worthy of our attention, that what is a sign of a healthy church? Or what are the many signs of healthy church? <clears throat> Number one is that they were all with one accord in one place receiving the Holy Spirit. We can't gather here and we have divisions in our hearts and in our minds and then ask for the Holy Spirit. We can't come here with pride. We can't come here judging and measuring one another. What the disciples did here is that they gathered humbly, praying, being open to God, open to God's work in their life, waiting for the gift, anticipating that gift, hungry for that gift, not just coming as a habit, not just coming as a cultural thing we do as a community of Egyptians. No. Church should not be a weekly habit. It is good to have this habit. It is, good. it is amazing to have tradition. We need tradition. We need the habit. We need the structure. We need, we need the routine. But we don't need the status quo. What we need 
that each one, b before you come here this morning and any morning, in your heart, you can pray, speak to me, O Lord. I am open to your gift today. I'm coming to you humbly. I'm only judging myself that I need you. I'm only looking at you. I'm only going to hear your voice. I'm only longing for your face. I don't want to be busy with other people's faces, voices, what they say, what they don't say, what they do, what they don't do. I'm, I'm coming here humbly asking to be filled. That's it. Make this prayer your prayer as you on your way here to church. They receive the Holy Spirit. So a healthy church is filled with the Holy Spirit. The healthy church speaks to different people with different needs. What is relevant to them? They began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Everyone heard them speak in his own language. We have to admit that we are not the same. Our children are not like us. And their children will not be like them. And this is a continuous development and growth in the way we see things. The world is evolving. Life is evolving. Culture should be evolving. We can evolve. We can change our minds. We can listen to one another. Listen to our children. They have many valid points. They have very good arguments. They are wiser than us. They know the world better than us. Be open. Speak their language. Speak their mind. Be humble and learn their worldview. Not everything they say is wrong. <laughs> Not everything they think is right is wrong. The church should be the same. Yes, we will maintain our teaching, maintain our tradition, but the church is dynamic. The tradition is dynamic. It is never static. It is never dead. The church is dead when it never changes, when it never speaks to its own people and what they need now. We can come for the comfort of the customs. We can come for the comfort of knowing what to say, what to do, when to stand, when to sit. But this is not the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is alive. The Holy Spirit is fire. And the Holy Spirit moves you to whatever direction he wants you to go. This is, should be our prayer. This should be a healthy, a sign of a healthy church. And then towards the end of this chapter, I'll just read it and I'll let you reflect and I hope we long for that image. Don't say, Ya Haram, that was the first church. We wish we, we can be like it. We, we are like it, we can be like it and we can be better than the first church because the Holy Spirit is one. The Holy Spirit is the same. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever. Number one, they received the word gladly. Then those who gladly received his word were baptized. And that day, 3,000 souls were added, receiving the word. A healthy church receives the word of God, and there is an action. A baptism is dying from the old life and accepting new life. So every time you hear and you receive the word of God, you need to make a decision. What do I need to give up? What do I need to die for and to live for? Every time you receive the word, 
every time you hear a sermon, every time you open the, the Bible and allow the Word of God to, to speak to you, there is a decision. Baptism is not one transaction we did when we were babies or for those people who got married later in their life and they joined our church, it is not one transaction you're done and you're married. No. Baptism is an ever going process of dying and living every day based on the Word of God, what it tells you to do. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, in breaking of bread and in prayers. There is continuation. There is coming together, together in fellowship. And the word fellowship means a lot than just being together. Canonia, fellowship, is becoming one with the Holy Spirit with different people, experiencing the presence of God. And this is canonia. Fellowship is to experience the presence of God together when we are gathered in His name. And the presence of God is not something external that comes on you. It is what you long for, how you are praying, how you're attending, and what is your state of mind. When we all are one in this state of mind, we experience the presence of God. There is fear upon every soul, and there is humility. There is no pride. There is no comparison. There is no competition between you and me, who is better, who, who will have the final word, who knows more about the other. No. There is fear of God. There is humility. Advancing one another Many wonders and signs were done through the apostles, and now who believed were together had all things in common. A sign of a healthy church, that it is a giving church, and it allows an environment for those who ha have needs to ask, not to be ashamed. Not to be ashamed if we have any need, spiritual, material, financial, whatever need, come to your home and ask. Say, I need help. We all struggle with mental health. We all struggle with needs, whether, again, social, financial, mental, health-wise. We are people. We are, we are one family. If you are struggling, come and say, I am coming home, I need help. Because everything should be in common. Think about it. We have many gifts. And these gifts are for the service for everyone in this family. The shared possessions, their goods, and divided them among all as everyone had need. Everyone has needs. Don't be too proud to say, I need nothing. I just come and leave. Okay, yeah, of course, come and leave if you pray and just leave, but don't come and leave and your heart is heavy and you leave with a heavy heart. Daily, with one accord in the temple, breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness, simplicity of heart. A sign of a healthy church, there is a, a sense of joy, a sense of gladness. Remember when we started this church? Remember? Almost seven years ago, in September 2015, I saw some pictures back in the day, 
and you can see a spirit of gladness, simplicity. Everybody just want to make it right, want to make it yani, happen. But with years, um, this spirit fades away. And I have warned against that many times. We need to keep that spirit of joy and being simple in heart and mind in order for us to have <coughs> a healthy church. A church is, is healthy when everyone comes with a simple heart, just wants to help, wants to make it better. There is no power struggles. There is no certain way that should be done, should be forced. And if this is done, if this is not done, I am leaving or I'm not here anymore. This is people talking. But we need the Holy Spirit to talk and to enforce his will and to change how we view our, ourselves in the, in the house of God. Gladness and simplicity of heart. Praising God, having favor with all people. And the result, the Lord adds to the church daily. Not numbers, but souls who are being saved. A sign of a healthy church is not numbers, but saved souls. And I hope this somehow gets planted in our mind as we come to church, as we evaluate our church, as we compare churches and we compare servants. A success is not in numbers. It's not, as, it's not plenty of um, um, activities. It is the salvation of souls. I hope this is really gets planted in our hearts and our, our minds. A, a healthy church has people whose so souls are saved. And a saved soul, we can talk about it for many times to come, but a saved soul um, submits its life to God, is humble, sees God's direction, Jesus is their personal Savior and Lord, and people who are growing in the Spirit, being baptized every day, again, as I said, not as one transaction happened some day ago, or, or uh, some years ago, but it is a daily movement from dead to life, from old to new. This is a saved soul. Giving up old habits, not being in bondage to bad habits, being free from bondage. This is a saved soul. A saved soul is a soul that longs to serve the Lord, longs to witness to God's work in their life. We can talk about it later. We can like, have a series about what is a saved soul. But I will end with this yeah, point. A healthy church is not only just full of people. A healthy church has people who are saved. Ask yourself today, am I saved or not? I'm not asking you, were you baptized or not? No. But are you saved or not? Because having been baptized, coming for communion every week is good. But being saved is really different. And maybe this will be our next talk. Today, um, after service, and we'll have like an hour break for coffee, and then at uh, 1 o'clock, we'll have the prayers of the Sagda, means prostration. 
we will relive what the disciples did in the upper room. We will relive this moment of getting down on our knees, being humble, and asking for the power of the Holy Spirit. In previous years, a handful of people attended it. I wish this year would be different. If you really are praying for a healthy church, if you are really longing for a church that will be strong, let's all come together at one o'clock today. And, and just let's kneel and plead for the Holy Spirit. Pray for the service. Pray for the ministry. Pray for us to be saved, for our children to be saved. I hope I will see as many of you today. To him all glory forever.